friends, foes, and other watchers on the internet. My name is Matt, and you're watching Hogwash Gaming. And it's the holiday season. People are starting to drive around more. They're trying to get to grandmother's house and, uh, you know, celebrate the holidays. And on the road, it can be a little boring. So, here are a few travel games to keep you entertained until you get sick and tired of them as well. The first game is one that we've all heard of. It's the alphabet game. And basically what you want to do is keep your eyes peeled for the letter A. Once somebody has found the letter A, then you move on to letter B. And then you keep going until you get to Z. And what I do is I go for digits next. It's a uh, one, two, three, four, you know, up into zero. Asterisks, question marks, you know, just keep going. Now there are a few ways you can play this game. You can play cooperative, which is you just get everyone in the car working. They work as a team, they look for things, and when you finish, everybody wins, and you spend a lot of time looking for stuff instead of being bored. Uh, another way to play is um, competitively, which means everyone gets a point for each letter that they find. Once again, you can do that as a competitive team, where once someone finds A, then everyone starts looking for B next. If you want to get really organized, you can make it a race, so each person keeps track of which letter they're looking for, and whoever makes it all the way through wins. That one might be a little harder to pull off because there's the accountability issue. You know, someone can say they saw a Q, but uh, they need to have proof that they found a Q. Maybe with a cell phone, but that kind of eliminates the driver as a contestant. Let's not do that. Another game you can play is Padiddle, and that usually works better around twilight or uh, just around dawn, but it can also be played in bad weather. What you're looking for is cars that are missing a headlight, and it has to be one of their main headlights. It can't be like one of the little ones down below, it has to be one of the main ones. And what happens is when you're the first one to see that, you punch through the roof of the car and say Padiddle, and that's one point towards you. Very simple game, but I'm sure there are variations out there that can make it a little more interesting. Thirdly, there's Punch Bug, in which the first person to see a Volkswagen Beetle has the option to punch their neighbor. This is a very competitive sport where I come from, and uh, yeah. There are some rules though. Number one, if you go by a Volkswagen dealership, that doesn't count. All of those cars were supposed to be there, they were planted there, you can't do that. Secondly, if you don't want to get punched, and you don't want to punch somebody, you can call out safety. This defends you from one punch bug each. It's kind of the loser's way out, but if you're just not up to making enemies with the driver, it might be the route to go. The driver should probably not play the majority of these games, just saying. Another great game is 20 questions. You think of a word, and it has to be a noun, and the other players collectively have 20 questions that they can ask in order to try and guess what you're thinking about. These questions can only be yes or no questions. And though the answers don't have to be black and white all the time, it definitely should be a goal of yours to be as specific as possible. The one who guesses what you're thinking of wins the game. And they're it for next time. So these have been a few of my favorite travel games. I hope you enjoy them. And until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out.